New Year. Uh, 2013, just at the end of 2012, hours before midnight. Uh, well, we started on in a large, uh, a large island or a, a miniature continent with three other players in the morning flash. I'm looking around and at this point I still think I'm on a I'm on an isolated piece of the continent. So I pick Liberty, seeing that I've got some places to expand to, I'm looking down the Republic line. And uh, I think, oh yeah, cool. A little bit longer, I begin to realise that this is a large continent. It's just me and two other players with uh, little access to other players. Barbarians start to become a real issue. And uh, I decide, well, shoot, may as well go all, all crazy. And uh, we we attend to actually wiping us who are close to us. Um, expanding up into the middle, I provoke the Spanish by uh, building way too close to them really early on. And they start to condemn and they attack my friendly city-state. So I respond by defending the city-state. Really, I have access to any other continent, not even over coastal sea waters. This is deep ocean between us. I'm not meeting up with these other islands, these other continents, until, you know, late medieval, early renaissance period. This, this is a long way off. So I'm, I'm in the middle of really raging it against the Spanish. Lots of combat, lots of barbarians all over the place. Uh, it's really quite a lot of mayhem. I focus a lot of my building spearmen and later going into the Greek hoplites. That's right, I forgot I, my, my civilization is Greek. We've got the Hellenic gallants and uh, hoplites, which are fantastic spearmen. They're better than your average spearmen. Uh, which means that I have a better relationship with my city states than usual. Um, I'm just expanding along the coastline. Uh, at, the, at this point, I don't really want to build over the land too much. I don't want to be building too many roads, although it doesn't end up working out like that. Uh, that was my plan going into it. And not not having focused on religion, I end up not being on religion because I'm unfortunately up the top. We have the Dutch who find Christianity. And um, they choose pagodas as a part of their their Christian belief. System so uh, pagodas help with your uh, your happiness and kept my people relatively happy and through such crazy expansion. Uh, this is me going up against the Dutch after I've already just crushed the Spanish. The Spanish off the off the Spanish. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have the. My people are not happy enough to attain the building of an, the takeover of another city. So after I take it, I launch it back to the Spanish. It's a long, hard battle against the against the Dutch civil, which is the city that they took over. We managed to take it back, and we take that breeder. Now the Dutch have a much stronger navy than we do, um, well we don't even have a navy at all. So we don't, and it gives to territory, uh, it's very, very challenging. My people are, are very unhappy with me still, we're not expanding, our economy is very weak, we've put too much energy. Oh, and the video skips over, um, we skip into 16 AD. 16, 000, uh, 1600 AD. I'm looking at the statistics and I'm really behind in literacy. Um, or I'm considered average, but I'm also uh, too far behind. We've got the third most land. I mean, we have the most land supply in third. Because I've been expanding a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm not really doing very well at all. My economy is weak. Um, I mean, it says I'm making GNP fifth place, but considering all of the roads and the amount of maintenance I'm spending, 
I should be in fear of the first place, so I'm really sort of manufacturing a lot of goods, but you know, I've got a lot more cities than other people do, so I should be manufacturing a lot. And my crop yields are terrible. My population is low, um, very low, in fact that's a real problem, 11th, yes, yeah, so my people are generally just not doing too well, my civilization is stagnating, but that's not war, trying to get this island together. So the, the next few hundred years is going to be about rebuilding. The 17th and the 18th century is about rebuilding. Um, I'm stuck in the medieval period for a very long time where other people are renaissancing away, figuring out their guns and their theology. Um, I'm, I'm kind of back here just trying to figure out how to get things moving at all. But I might, that's one thing, I've got this ocean between people, so I might later go to actually do things. And and I do do things. Um, entering into the 18th century, and I, I'm just starting to I'm just really starting to power along. And uh, you can see that um, my crop yields have increased drastically. My population uh, it's beginning to increase, but my people are still very uh, over spend. Yeah, people aren't very happy. Literacy is, well, we're not really moving forward technologically. Uh, we really need something else. Um, because we're so overexpanded as well, our, our culture is behind. So I'm not going to be going to be able to make use of great, great uh, cultural advances. Uh, all I can afford is my commerce, and I'm going to have to go straight into a modern, uh, a modern early on. Um, with only and, uh, but that's okay, um, I'm looking around and, and trying to keep things together. People start over, trying to expand into my territory, you see the continents have been turmoil, lots of war, and you get, you're starting to have superpowers appear, and they're looking over at my island, where my island's fairly barren, and there's territory to expand into. And here we see the religions, Christianity of the Dutch, the Hinduism my, my sort of Hinduism is great, they've got mosques and they've got to uh, feed the people. Uh we we um so I can get more food into my civilization, my people. Which is fascinating because it's it appears that the Celts become a great superpower from a capital city of Edinburgh, which, which is built with very little access to crops or food, but they managed to take over the Aztecs, and the Aztecs were incredible crop, um, incredible farmers using civilization as a thing block. They managed to be the largest population on earth, and you see here, 29 million people in their civilization, 1790. It's really, really amazing. Our literacy is still stagnating. Uh, well, compared to others it is, it's starting to move up, but um, remembering people have been in the Renaissance period for a while and they've actually started to big build universities and we're still behind with, but yeah, it, it's really unfortunate, but we're starting to get things together and our spies are going to start stealing technology from other people. Uh, so this is, as we're getting into the Renaissance, we're getting our first spies, we're beginning to extract from organizations, it's getting really getting quite intense now, but I need to pick something. Uh, this is the point of choosing, and I'm going to go for, uh, it, it's a tough one, you see, I've, I've got a fairly dispersed, dispersed organization, we've got huge roads that we can't afford to run, it's expensive, and then we've got, you see, I'm making the GNP, the second place in the GNP, making a lot of gold, but, you know, I'm having to spend that gold on my massive, awesome, I afford it because I'm just spending too much money. And then I find the Celts. The Celts are one of the great superpowers and I'm starting to adopt their religion. They're already in the industrial era. They're, they're doing very well and they're picking up autocracy. Uh, fascinating. They're going to be a real problem if I choose them as an enemy. If I choose them as an ally, they could be very, very useful. They have a lot of land, they've got a lot of access to luxury use resources, in which I need. My continent, unfortunately, didn't have a lot to it. There, there, wasn't, there weren't the great luxury resources expected are really good to expand out large. So I needed them as a friend, so I chose autocracy. I adopted autocracy, hoping that, you know, I could 
warm my way into success. Um, I could have picked order in which I would have had to jostle for position and literacy and try and go for the space project. Um, uh, a cultural victory, finding utopia, was not an option. And at this point the video cuts out again and I switch forward in time. Uh, but what I did is just entering the 20th century, uh, the English attacked. And remembering that technologically I was quite far behind and entering into the 20th century I was building my, I, I was starting to run a pirate um, that I launch into and invade the English with. And I have to invade, I don't have much of a choice because I'm choosing autocracy. I'm never going to match up with everybody else and um, as, a, as an autocrat, I'm never going to match up with everybody else and just in terms of science or or any, anything, so I can't actually win the game unless I attack. Pirate ships and the one of my people can't be more advanced and had the fantastic advantage of the ship of the line, which is a unique ship of the English. And using that we managed to take Newcastle and from there take other things, but also invade and take over some of their ships of the line and later a ironclad that the English built. Amazing ship. And in doing so, we realise, well shoot, this ship is becoming a lot better than our other ships. It's become a lot more experienced. So we gave it a name. It's, it becomes our flagship vessel for the rest of the match. Uh, we called it uh, Nick of the High Seas because we we're up in the high seas. We we're up in the very up near the tundra where the uh, English were. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a, a fantastic invasion. You're going to see it's going to cut over in a few moments now. Or oh, maybe I'm maybe I'm a bit early. Um, the economy is still stagnating. It takes a long time for our civilization to really start to mix into things. Um, but fascinating, fascinating enough, because we managed to wipe out the, the Spanish and the Dutch really early on, or at least attempt to wipe them out, even though it put us into stagnation, it, it gave us isolation. And we were isolated enough to survive um, the times of stagnation, depression. And we actually came out really well. Um, we're, as studying protectionism, after studying protectionism as a political philosophy, uh, we managed to find great happiness, and that was a, it was a good good measure. Um, this is about when the video cuts out, somewhere around uh, the 20th century, it uh, cuts out. Uh, you see at the top of the uh, west continent, um, you've got the English and the Chinese. The uh, the pure equals, um, the English and the Chinese um, own around about the equal amount of land and on an equal continent, so it's it quite fascinating that. They, they're both partially on a tundra though, the southern, the very northern part of their land is really terrible quality. London, their capital city builder. Um, uh, the economy is still relatively stagnant. Um, Hopefully soon we'll see a bit of the demographics and see how we've just managed to relatively segment and you see more city more people are trying to inhabit my I'm all. Even the Celts you see Pernsey is be is being put on our continent and we're wiping it out. And they don't take they don't really hold a grudge because they're inhabiting our island and they realise that. So that that's works. Now I'm studying the railway at the moment, Get it, getting, building a railway set up on our island was a double-edged sword, extremely expensive, it was one of the most expensive projects ever and the maintenance costs of having a railway covering a whole continent was extremely expensive, but on the other hand it was really handy. Um, I think any time now it will cut out, yep, nope, okay, setting up in the uh, I'm going to start trading off some of my luxury resources soon, or what little luxury resources I have to try and get this railway going, and my people, my people decline into depression, um, well not depression, uh, not an economic depression, but a, um, a sort of a 
Okay. Oh, here we go. So I've taken out the English now. High seas knickers on a rampage, and I start pushing into the German territory because the Germans' literacy at this point is far ahead of everybody else's. Um, well, not a far. Uh, the Germans are e economically doing quite well. A fairly small civilization, but they've got great technology, and so we need to wipe them out. Um, and we're getting to this point where we're realizing that we're not going to win scientifically. We're not going to create a utopia. The only way we can win is by domination. We have to take out the enemy's capitals. And this is going to be a long haul. I'm going to have to focus purely on destruction. Everything I can create to destroy my enemies. Um, and t remembering technologically I'm behind, so I have to beat them in numbers as well. Um, I, the I wipe out the JTP from a G uh, up, up north, from Stuttgart, or something like that. And uh, Machu Picchu provided me with a a uh, slight economic boost, in increased the amount of, improved my economy, which is already pretty good, you know, I, I, I had all of that time of isolation, so I'd, I'd started to get an economy that was working well, and um, this is when I invade the east side, east side of the Celts, and I just use that as a point to hold, so on the west side of the Celts, that I can actually launch my invasion. Now on the east side was where my bulk of my experienced army was. They were they had just been they had just attacked the Romans, taken Rome, and we held a made a defensive position in Rome. And attacking the east, we managed to hold, stop and hold. Um, I did this on purpose because on the west that's where my army is. I could push. Um, so I used my experienced army to hold. That's when I suddenly, when I realised I had a chance to pounce on Edinburgh, all my armies came together and we wiped out Edinburgh. From that point onward, it was very much a slow grudge fest against the Celts. Um, and they were also very good as they were. They had chosen autocracy, but unfortunately, they were getting very powerful. And even back in the 80s, they were looking at building the science project. They already had the Apollo project going and. They were ready to get up into space and win the game. So I had to wipe them out. I didn't really have much of a choice. If I didn't wipe them out, they would have won and I would have lost. Um, the China, But then the, shockingly, the Chinese build the Hubble Space Telescope. And this is a major problem because that gives them a crazy science boost. And they just launched, launch pad into the lead with their Hubble Space Telescope. So I had to launch an invasion on two sides. And you can see me wiping out parts of the Chinese, trying to, trying to, fight them down. It's a very slow go. Imagining that my my forces have been divided. Um, I, I have one part of my force trying to protect the English portion of my civilization from the Chinese. Another part trying to attack the Chinese from our productive end. Um, and the other one side trying to hold the defensive position on the west side, which doesn't really go too well. And then on the west side of the Celts. And on the east side of the Celts, we're actually invading over the top of them. And then, the Ottomans. Well, the Siamese are building a utopia, which doesn't work out because of the English. Um, and the and huge amounts of pressure from the Ottomans. So, um, the the Siamese utopia doesn't become too much of a problem. They, they almost make it, but don't quite. So, culturally, the, the Siamese are probably doing the best on the map. But um, then... We have the Ottomans, and the Ottomans take up communism quite late in the game. They go into communism, and they begin to scientifically advance very, very quickly. And all stealth bombers that I created in the year 2000 launch the one city, and we launch an invasion on Istanbul. We wipe out the the uh, Ottom Ottoman because the Ottomans. We're the last chance of victory in the game, and I wiped them out good. That's in that position from the Siamese coast. I used to take out the Siamese capital. I had nothing personal against the Siamese, but all I needed at that point of the game, I'd taken all of the capitals out in the game, and all I needed was the Siamese capital. Um, at the end of the game, my literacy was ahead, was barely ahead. I was like one point ahead, but 
everything else except for approval. People still hated me. I was still an autocratic dictator and people still hated me. I've set up courthouses all over the map. Now you can see in the central continent, the central continent is, well, imagine billion, but still fairly small. Quickly wiping out the Dutch and, uh, yeah, sort of stagnating, 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 then attacking the English and loading into the Germans. Yeah, that was, was it was really sudden expansion quite late in the game. Um, and it was desperate, you know. I, I had to desperately attack. I wasn't... Uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't